Welcome back to the tutorial series in which we are looking into the insights of messing. And this video is specifically going to be the most important video if you are interested in FEM, perform projects, or you are going to go into some industry. This is the most important part of any messing uh, process. In this video, we are going to look at how to perform mess independency study. So what does that mean? That will also I'll explain and we'll also look at into how to get an optimized mess refinement. It's not that you blindly just refine your mess, get some smaller and smaller size of elements and you will have better results. That's a myth, that is completely wrong. So now we we'll look into the more details. So first the mess independency study, what does that mean? It means that uh, we want to um, refine the mess, but till what extent? So that defines uh, our optimization results. So we have seen and we have understood the use of uh, the mass matrix and understood what all different parameters we generally need to check that were quality, mass quality and the expect ratio. So let's look into the process of mass independency and the, the purpose. So what we want to do, we want to improve our mass. What does the improvement means? We want to refine mass, but where, how, until what is extent, let's look into it. So first, uh, we want to refine it to such an extent that it takes minimum time to compute. So we want to reduce our computational time, but on top of it, our aim is we, we want, do not want to compromise our results. The accuracy of results, the precision of results should not be compromised. The second thing is we want to extend it, the refinement to such a stage that if we more refine it, if we have more, smaller size of elements from that stage, it is impractical and sometimes it may lead to wrong results. So these are the two main purposes and till what time should we uh, do mass refinement. So I'll explain you some basic uh, process and the, the controls in ANSYS first and then we'll look at a, a sample of an Excel sheet which I used to maintain during my project time. And that, that gave me very uh, useful results which are expect expectable and acceptable required maybe in an industrial project. So let's start with the controls. So just I'll revise the things which are important. So when we open the messing module, the mechanical module, we have seen that we can generate some mess. We can insert different, uh, different controls, different types of element sizing. So if I just uh, go for some general size and maybe choose a, an element or a body, uh, let's uh, try to choose a part. So I'll try to have a small uh, quarter of my body in uh, right now. So let me select the body. And uh, the option over here I get, this is an on, uh, a box. And if I tick it over here, if I tick and toggle it, so a P is written over there. That P means it is going to now take that as a parameter. Taking it as a parameter, that means that if I go back to my workbench and check, so earlier also I had put some parameters and now if I go to that parameter set, that parameter set will open and what will the parameters be over there? Whatever parameters I have added from my uh, messing module or geometry module, that all will be listed at one place. So what are the advantages? I have put it uh, the, the size of elements, body sizing element size as that parameter. Now I can, without going to a uh, mechanical module or that's another window, what I can directly do is I can change that. I can control it. So I can put the, the value over here. And then if I click on update all design points for all the points I have entered, so I can enter one mm, then I can enter two mm. So if I want to do this, this is going to be helpful when I when I explain it, the, the, the actual process of mass independency. So this is one point where you can, change the size of elements, the type of elements, etc., without going to messing module. And the other thing which is important for you to check is when you, when you go to mess, we have an option in quality, in the details tab in quality, we have an option to check the mess. And uh, the mess matrix is highlighted over here. So we can check different uh, types of mess parameters. If I can check mess quality and expect ratio, etc. So these are the things which is going to help us. 
So we have seen two things. We have seen how to uh, parameterize the size of elements. And second, we, we have seen how to check the mass matrix. Now I'll uh, explain you how, what is the actual process of optimizing the, the refinement in my mess. So that is the process which I have followed during my project. So I used to maintain an Excel sheet and we, and whatever parameters I had selected, I will put different uh, parameter sizes over there or values. So these are the parameters which I have put. So it is mess size on my vessel. So vessel was the name of my part. Any comment mess size on my nozzle. So that was another part. And the number of nodes, elements and other things generated. And I have put all other details of my mess, which I used to control over here. So the type of element, the method, the size, the pinch tolerance, uh, corner angle, target quality, everything I have put, whatever advanced details I had and different combination of these details will generate me the mess. So then I have listed the mess results with number of elements, number of nodes, and then the most important part comes over here, what I use uh, or what I experience. So for each of that, this is a different design point for me. So this is the first design point. Then we have the second design point. So for each of the design point, I have captured the element quality. So this is the element quality chart for the first iteration or the first design point. This is for the second design point, third, fourth. And how am I doing this? I'm just changing a few of my parameters of my mess the size or tolerance, et cetera, and then checking the quality of my mess. So I, I'll have some X number of different design points. So I have one for some um, 15, 20, 25. So I have put 14. I've just put some scrap, uh, snapshots over here for the reference. And now what's the actual process? Now what I'll start doing this, uh, let's go and see more charts. So now we can see that at higher value of, um, uh, this is going to more refine. So you can see that the number of elements have um, increased from one to two. So the iteration number one to two, the elements have increased, they have reduced, etc. So they, these are two like 89,000, one like 15,000. Then we can see it is three like 82,000, six like 13 like 82,000. So they have, they are, these are huge number of nodes. And then at last we have two like 29,000 of nodes. So we can see the number of nodes, the number of elements have listed been down. And then we have the chart for quality. So we can see if I go on refining, the quality has increased and the number of elements which are close to one have increased. They, have, they are still increasing. They have still increased. And I can also check the, the type of elements I have in my mess. So I can over here, I can see that uh, a more number of elements have listed down and come down to uh, less quality. So over here, the, the quality is more or less over 75 percentage. But here I have a large number of elements which are uh, very having a very low quality. Over here, the mass matrix has completely shifted and the normal distribution can be seen, which is close to 0.75 or 75 um, percentage quality. So this, this step, Ninth step, whatever changes I did in my um, in my uh, parameters that are not useful. So these are futile. This is not the correct step. Or whatever changes I did, that should not be repeated next. So I can do that. Again, I can check, check, uh, check that if I have seen. Uh, so this is a different thing. This is not the mass quality. This must be expect ratio. So it is because one it is greater than one. Similarly, if I check this, the 10th iteration also, I have, I can see that there are more number of elements close to 75 percentage quality. So this is also not, not good. Uh, then we can check the quality over here in the 14th iteration, the quality has increased significantly and most number of elements are above 90% quality. Then going to more refined, so this is then as I go on to the next iteration, the refinement is increasing. The number of elements are increasing. So the, we can see that the quality is not changing much. The distribution is more or less the same. And then we can understand that even if I keep on increasing the number of elements, if I go on increasing the refinement of my, uh, of my um, mess, then also I am not getting higher quality mess. That means that these changes are futile. This is not required. So which is the first step where we 
it had the very good quality of mesh and there was no significant improvement in the quality on the later stage so i can see at the 15th iteration i have a very good quality the number of elements are whatever we have around maybe 50000 elements because this is 36000 and some more because of this bar charts so maybe this is 50000 or 45000 but if i increase the number of elements the distribution is more or less the same but the number of elements have increased too much so these are some 80000 elements 80 to 90000 elements are there so this has been directly doubled the number of elements with no significant improvement in quality so at this point i can infer that whatever controls i have input for mesh generation for 15th iteration are perfect for me after this even if i go for more refinement these are futile i am not getting any significant improvement in my mesh quality so i'll stop at 15 and uh, use whatever controls i have for the 15th iteration final for my uh, project so that's how we perform mesh independency study thank you